Hi everybody, so good to see you. A great decision, a great choice, uh, being tuned in here uh, to, to watch the service, not because I'm so great, but because I believe God has something great to tell you today. An encouragement to your faith, regardless of where you may see yourself in your spiritual journey today, the Lord has a wonderful word for you. His word will not return without accomplishing its purposes. Well, we've been in a series on bold prayer and have just been blown away at some of the things that we've heard uh, being prayed. And today's no different, no different. Uh, our, our theme is, is eyes wide open. Uh, maybe you remember this. Uh, uh, first time for me was uh, uh, in my high school um, uh, psychology class when the teacher uh, put up these pictures and you look at them and it, it can be one thing or it can be another thing. It just kind of depends on how you look at it. And they put up another picture and it's like, whoa. And then they say, oh no, actually it's this. And, and I'm watching this and I'm just, I'm getting a little nervous. I'm thinking to myself, do I really see what I think I'm seeing in life? Am I really have a perception of things or are things not what I really think? And then they came out with those uh, little things that, you know, you look at them and then if you cross your eyes just right, you know, the, the picture pops out and it's like, whoa, what is that? And, and I was, again, just thinking, what do, what do I really see in life? What are, are my perceptions really accurate? Am I really getting it or, or am I just kind of in a different space than everybody else? It was very interesting to contemplate and I, I decided to bring a couple of pictures and just to kind of see how uh, it, it, that might, they might look to you with that point of considering this idea of perception, this idea of seeing things uh, that uh, may not be as they really are. Uh, so here's the, here's the first picture. Take a look at that. Uh, well, what, what do you see? Well, my, my guess would be uh, a, a picture of the planets, right? When you look at that. Well, actually, that is the bottom of a set of frying pans. Really? Yeah, sure is. Well, here, here's, a, here's another picture. Take a look at this one. What? What do you see as you uh, take a look at, uh, at this particular picture? And I first saw it, I thought, wow, that's a, that's a pretty cool modern art apartment, you know, one I could never really afford. And well, what it really is, is the picture of the inside of a guitar. Again, Mind blown, perceptions, what am I really seeing? Well, here's the third one. Take a look at this one. What do you see? Looks like a piece of sidewalk that you're looking at that. No, nope, not a piece of cement, not a piece of concrete sidewalk. Nope. That is actually an aerial photograph of the city of New Delhi, India. Absolutely mind-blowing when you look at these kinds of things and there's a ton of them out there and it all is feeding this idea of perception perception and the truth of the matter is we all have a little bit of a perception problem don't we I mean do we actually really ever see anything for the way that it is one of the places that I see it the most in my own life and the lives of other people uh, uh, is in, uh, for example, a marriage relationship or uh, a parent-child relationship where this incident takes place, something happens and, you know, maybe it's kind of intense. And then if you were to sit down uh, with the husband and say, hey, tell me what happened. And they would tell you, well, this was said and this was done and this was how, how things rolled out. And this is what we talked about. And, and this is how the emotions were. And then we sit down with the wife and we say, hey, let's talk about that. And I'll tell you, this is what happened. This is what said. And, and this is kind of the feeling around all of that. And you're just sitting there and you're listening uh, and you're going, wait a minute. You guys, you guys aren't even in the same, you know, solar system with each other. 
different content, uh, uh, different uh, actual words that were spoken, uh, different uh, reality of the situation. And, I mean, it is like light years apart, but the only thing that is agreed on is that there was an interaction. And that's about it. Because perception and what we see, what we think we see is, is so limited and so small. And we're reminded of that in our story today, how, how easy it is to not see uh, what and how things really are. And from a, from a biblical worldview, it is the spiritual realm uh, that is the more real than the physical realm and the more significant reality. And yet too often we are blind to that which is what is happening in the spiritual realm. And this prayer here, uh, this bold prayer is right along that line of, of spiritual vision, of being able to see what one normally couldn't see. And it's the bold prayer of, uh, of Elisha and his servant. And they're in this what apparently is a predicament, but it really speaks to this idea of perception and eyes being opened to that which is the greater reality, the spiritual things. So let me just uh, read the story and then we'll make a few observations and move on from there. Uh, uh, when the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately, Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel. Do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he would be on the alert there. The king of Aram became very angry over this. He called his officers together and demanded, which of you is the traitor who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord, the king, one of the officers replied. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. Go and find out where he is, the king commanded, so I can send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elisha is at Dothan. So one night, the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed. O oh Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. Incredible scene, incredible bold prayer by God's prophet Elisha. Here, this, this enemy uh, a, a country and king that was, they were, you know, attacking Israel and they were planning to do harm. Perhaps uh, uh, some uh, commentators suggested looking to try to kidnap the king and get him somehow. And yet every single time they would have a plan, right? Elisha would go tell the king of Israel what the enemy king was going to do. So he wouldn't go to that place, and on and on it went. And the, and the guy obviously was getting a little upset. It really looked like somebody who was in on their planning meetings was, uh, was, was a secret spy given that information. And one of his guys told him, hey, look, not a spy. It's Elisha, God's prophet. He, he knows, and, 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 and he hears everything that you say. So the king says, well, then we're going to stop him. Let's go find out where he is. We'll go get him. And uh, that'll be the end of that. And they show up and discover uh, uh, that uh, there was a greater army that was there for Elisha than the one that they had brought up against him. Incredible scene. Incredible story. 
Uh, let's unpack that a little bit. As we look at verses 12 through 14, we almost uh, catch ourselves kind of giggling a little bit. Uh, here's, this, here's this king, and he was just told, Hey, uh, Elisha hears everything that you say. He was just told that. He hears everything that you say. And so the king says, well, well hey, we're going to do a sneak attack on him then, and we'll get him. And you're thinking to yourself, seriously? Didn't you hear what he just said? Uh, he can hear everything you're saying. You're not going to sneak up on him. It's not going to be a surprise. He knows. And yet the king was just bloop, apparently oblivious to the information that he had just received about Elisha and how God was revealing to him everything uh, uh, and so that he was in the know. And yet, even though he knew that, he still came up with this great idea. Well, let's go get him. We'll sneak up on him. He won't know this time, right? And it goes to, to demonstrate this reality that, that information alone does not grant somebody spiritual sight. Uh, just because somebody knows or has uh, very important pieces of information doesn't mean that they're going to see. Remember, there were many that day when Jesus called Lazarus out of his grave. They had the information. This man raises people from the dead. But they didn't believe. Didn't believe at all. There was no spiritual sight. Now, the information is important, and the information we're told to give as a Jesus follower is the good news of Jesus, that he came, he died on the cross for our sins, and that by believing in him, we have forgiveness of sins and peace with God. That good news message needs to be shared, but just giving that information does not, in and of itself, provide spiritual vision. It, it, it you know, just... Think about uh, uh, perhaps in your, your own journey where maybe your testimony is you heard about Jesus for a long time, many, many different times. And then one day you heard that good news message and all of a sudden there was like a burning inside your chest. I have to respond. I have to move forward. I, God, I, I, God's calling me and and. Even though you heard that information so many times before that, right then and right there, there was something else. Something else was happening that completed your spiritual sight that you could see and you could believe. Wow. This, this king was still spiritually blind. He could not perceive the spiritual. Even though he had the information, it just went right over his head. Well, then we come to verse 16, and Elisha uh, is, is speaking to his servant who just walked out, and sure enough, this king found out where Elisha was, and he sent his army, and they surrounded the place as, uh, as if Elisha didn't know that this was happening. I mean, he obviously knew. He had the spiritual perception, and, and there was a a purpose in God's heart and mind for all of this. But the servant, he didn't know this yet. And he went out there and he was scared to death. He said, oh, Elisha, what are we going to do? And, and he said, don't be afraid. And it doesn't even say that Elisha went outside to look himself. Uh, it, it just, he, he just said, don't be afraid, for there are more on our side than on theirs. There was the army of the Lord with them, and Elisha knew that. Elisha could see that, and yet the servant could not see that. And it is important to note, as one of the commentators, this is what they, they, uh, their, their observation is this, that spiritual sight is not the imagining of something that isn't there. Something imaginary, something make-believe. No, that's not, that's not what spiritual sight is. Spiritual sight is a grabbing a hold of the things that are there, but cannot be demonstrated to the senses. My physical sight, touch, feel, hear. 
that, that I could take a hold of that through spiritual sight. And this is the reality there. Elisha is telling them they are there. The, the more with us than are against us. Yeah, that's a big old army that's come up against us, but they're nothing compared to what's with us. And he could see that, and he knew that. This servant couldn't. And so, so he would pray then, verse 17, to the, to the Lord. Elisha says, O Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Give him spiritual sight, O God, that he can see that which is there, and yet he can't perceive it yet. Open his eyes, let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw, he saw the hillside around them was filled with horses and chariots of fire. And what do, we, what do we see? We see information alone doesn't provide spiritual sight. We see that uh, spiritual sight isn't making something up. You're, you're just playing make-believe. No, it's the real, it's the spiritual that is outside of our senses that we become aware of and in tune to and have a spiritual sight. And, and here we see, who did Elisha pray to give this this servant spiritual sight, God. Only God can give spiritual sight. We can give people information and for you know hour after hour, a hundred times, a thousand times. We can do this, we can do that, uh, but we cannot grant people faith to believe. We cannot give them sight. We we cannot make that decision to trust in in the Lord. We can't grant them spiritual vision, and it's the it's the same thing uh, uh, he's alluding to that Jesus taught as he was talking about this ability to come and put one's trust in and believe uh, what God has said and what God was doing. In John chapter 6, and we'll look at just a couple of verses here, verse 44 and then 63 through 65. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from Him comes to me. And then he picks it up. Verse 63. The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Can I say that again? Words of Jesus. Human effort accomplishes nothing. Nothing. The very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But some of you do not believe me. For Jesus knew from the beginning which ones didn't believe, and he knew who would betray him. And then he said, this is why I said that people can't come to me unless the Father gives them to me. Nobody, no one comes to me unless the Father draws them. And here we see that reflected in Elisha's prayer. Only God can give spiritual sight. Only God can draw somebody to Jesus. Only God can do that. And as there is a surrender, a cooperation uh, with the Holy Spirit and that drawing work, spiritual vision now becomes ours as we put our trust and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The greater than of God, the experiencing of Him is, is only going to, to be realized by those with spiritual sight. The experience of God, the wonder of his power, the ability to see him at work. Remember Jesus said, I only do what I see my father doing. And, and, and you know, the disciples are looking around. What are you talking about, Jesus? What are you, well, I don't, where's the father? Jesus knew exactly where he was. He had the spiritual sight and he was responding to what he was doing. Now, 
we don't have to embrace uh, uh, Christ. We don't have to enter in uh, by faith. We don't have to submit ourselves to the authority of God and the truth of the good news and believe in him. Many in Jesus' own day rejected him, and we can too. We can say, no, I am only going to live life in the physical. It's all there is, is what you can see here, feel, taste, and touch with your, with your, your physical body. That's it. There's nothing else. We can choose that. We can live that way and spend our life trying to manufacture some semblance of purpose, some semblance of meaning, uh, and, uh, and frantically look around day after day for something that we could, we'll, we'll hope will be a safe place for our hope. Uh, the, that I can put, I'll put my trust here, I'll put my trust there, I'll put my trust in them, I'll put their trust in, in this situation there. All these things in the physical realm that are, that are very shaky, very shaky foundations that come and go just like that. Struggling, if I'm going to create my own meaning, my own purpose, uh, that, that is the life without spiritual vision. God has invited us into a life of spiritual vision. What does that look like? I think it, it, it has a lot uh, for what we can see here out of this story. Pray for eyes to be opened. Well, I should did. And in the context there, he was praying for another. Seems like a really good response, doesn't it? Pray that people's eyes would be open. Paul would express it this way. Uh, I pray that uh, God would open doors for the gospel. What is he asking for? Spiritual vision to be granted. That, that hearts would be responsive uh, to, to the message of, this, of the good news. We should pray that way too. Oh God, that eyes would be open. And I think it was a fair request too that we would pray and ask God to open our eyes. God, open our eyes. I want to see you. I want to see Jesus. I want to see where you're at work. Alert me. Help me to know and to engage in that. Then uh, there is this living in God's greater than. Living God's greater than. Uh, a great story in 2 Chronicles chapter 32. King Hezekiah surrounded by an enemy army ready to destroy them. And the people are shaking in their boots. And Hezekiah speaks to them and he says, now listen, yeah, there's a great army out there, no doubt about it, but, but it's just people and that's just horses. There's one who is much greater than that who fights for us. Our God fights for us. The greater than is God. Amazing story. And he would not surrender to that king. He would not submit to being a, a slave and everybody being hauled away into captivity. He said, no, our God is greater than here. And then we need to be uh, uh, cultivating spiritual sight. Well, how do we do that? Uh, I'll just give you three things to remember here. His son, his word, and his people. Cultivating spiritual sight. We have to be spending a lot of time with Jesus, a lot of time in the Word of God, and a lot of time with the people of God. As Hebrews 10, we read, do not neglect the assembly of others so that we can come together and that we can spur one another on to love and good deeds. Oh, that's why we're so, so passionate about life groups around here. Because we, we, we just know that people rubbing shoulders, doing life together, encouraging one another's faith it is going to be critical to, to cultivating a spiritual vision, a perspective that is of the greater and the real, the more real reality than that which we can see with our physical eyes. His son, his word, and his people, the greater than of God is experienced only by those who have spiritual sight. Wow. May we be living in the reality of that. Please pray with me. Father God, what a, 
what a joy it is to know that there is so much more beyond what we can see, feel, hear, taste, and touch. There's a much greater reality. And God, I pray that we would uh, be passionate about living in and experiencing that reality, the true reality of spiritual sight, and that it would be a regular, bold prayer of ours. God, open my eyes. Open the eyes of, of, of my, my friend, my family member, my spouse, my child, my grandchild, my neighbor, my coworker. God, open their eyes that they could have spiritual sight too. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful privilege to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you. Maybe you haven't heard that for a while. He loves you. He loves you so much that he came, he lived, he died on that cross, he was buried and he raised again on the third day for you. And, and, I, and I pray that that doesn't just fall on you as information today. But the reality of that, the depth of that uh, invites you into perhaps for the first time in your life entering in by faith in that relationship with him and capturing spiritual vision. Jesus said this in that very same chapter we were reading from. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. Wow. Believe in him, the one who loves you. Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe is condemned already. The invitation to spiritual sight, to a relationship with him is yours. And I would love to talk with you about that decision. So please, uh, just reach out online, call the church office. Love, love, love to talk with you about that. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. It's so good to be with you. I love you. God loves you. I can't wait to see you. Uh, and just go now in the grace and the love and the mercy of the Lord Jesus. May his blessing be upon you in every way according to his great purposes in Jesus name. Amen. Have a great week.